Hello, my name is John Rose, and in this video I'd like to take a closer look at a very special relationship, a symbiotic relationship that we're supposed to have with the only food on this planet that wants us to eat it. And I think of this relationship as a sad romance. In fact, it's got to be the saddest romance that has ever afflicted mankind ever since the fall of mankind, which, by the way, is the reason why it's such a sad romance. Because when we honor our symbiotic relationship with the only food that wants us to eat it, we both flourish and yet look around. That's not what we see. Neither one of us are flourishing. And to illustrate just how sick we are as a species, some of us believe and use as an excuse not to honor this symbiotic relationship because th th this food is not flourishing. It can't support us. And it just illustrates how sick we are and how People just don't think things out. When we, when we, uh, when we uh, honor this symbiotic relationship, we both flourish. When we don't honor it, neither one of us flourishes. All we have to do to change that is, is simply honor this relationship. Do what we're supposed to do. Eat only the food that wants you to eat it. It depends on us and we depend on it. And again, what we see are people saying, but look around. There's not enough of this food to feed everybody. Well, that's because we're not doing it. It's supply and demand. Once we reach the tipping point, once we realize that this is the main thing we have to nurture, there's only one relationship we need is the symbiotic relationship. Once we realize that, once we reach a tipping point, things will change so fast we'll have more than enough of this food to feed everybody because, it, because we can grow more food per acre using this than anything else and we don't have to do anything to it. And in the past, we always knew at least seven generations ahead what we had to do so that everything just took care of itself and it was minimal effort. And yet you hear arguments saying, oh, can't feed the planets on lettuce. <laughs> well, that's not what we're designed to eat specifically or predominantly. We are frugivores, fruitarians. That's the food that wants us to eat it. And guess what? Wherever that food is going, there's always going to be weeds underneath that tree that are specific to complement that food. And then people say, well, you can't feed the planet uh, the way it is now. Of course not. But things will change when the supply, uh, when the demand is there, the supply will happen. And as far as the vegetables, we're not going to feed the whole planet on lettuce. My God, I heard this comment the other day by John Venus, and he used that as an argument. Don't you guys ever think you just regurgitate and repeat the same stuff. This is the babble effect in science. When one scientific study comes out with crap and all the other studies reference back to the crap, it's the babble effect. We got the babble effect now in the vegan community repeating stupid reasons why we shouldn't adopt a raw vegan diet. Oh, can't feed the planet right now. Well, of course not. But it will, it can, it can do it better than anything because that's what we're supposed to be doing. And then to think we can't complement a fruitarian diet with enough greens, my God, are you that dense? Come on, man, put, your, put that noggin into work. You know that it's, it's simple. You can grow all the food you need in your own garden, in your own yard, rooftop gardens. One big, decent-sized garden per block or per area is all we need. It doesn't take much. And, and, and we should have food grown everywhere. This is, a, this is so, such a nonsensical argument, nonsensical, non-logical argument to use. And yet we see it, the Babel effect, over and over and over and over. It's the only food that wants us to eat it. And the problem with some of us is we've damaged ourselves and now we might struggle doing that. So we've got to figure out what to do until our body gets healed again. Something's attacking me out here. What is this? And 
that's what I've talked about many times. We've got two groups of needs based on anatomical limitations. There are two of them. We're born with anatomical limitations. We have a species-specific diet. It doesn't include animals. It doesn't include grains. Look at our anatomy. We're not grain of ores. We don't have the organs to eat those foods. And grains, eating grains, that's the first processed foods. That's when we started cooking those foods. So we're not biologically adapted to eat those foods. There's only one group of foods that wants us to eat it. And there's a symbiotic relationship that we're supposed to establish. And if we did that, we would both flourish. And we're not flourishing now because we don't understand how to embrace this simple, simple relationship. Now, I'll be the first to admit that most of us aren't brought up this way, obviously, and going back to this way is a challenge. So what's the best solution? I'm convinced the best transition is to go on a solid food vacation. Give yourself a break from eating the wrong food. Stop eating everything so it's easier not to eat the wrong food. You can go down below and watch a video I did called The First Step of a seminar on how to do a juice fast or a juice feast or a solid food vacation. And if you're not motivated, listen to the uh, Dr. Robe interview and watch the Deborah Duncan show. And look at the comment sections in my, on my channel. I'm trying to clean it up as much as I can so that all the conversations are going to be worth reading. I don't want a bunch of garbage on here and talking about things that really don't apply. And they're interesting. I don't mean to stifle certain communication, but hopefully I'll have a place for that in a, if I ever get my website up and running. And I know I asked for people to, to help me on this, and some of y'all have came, uh, responded to me. I'm sorry I haven't got back with you yet, but I'm thinking, my God, I was afraid you'd ask me, what, do I, what am I looking for? <laughs> my God, I got another iron in that fire. So uh, hopefully I'll have a place where we can talk about all sorts of things. But I want my channel to be really simple so that we can reestablish this symbiotic relationship. <laughs> Not with that thing biting on me, but with the food that wants us to eat it. And I guarantee you, when you establish that relationship, your life is indeed a treat.